Welcome back. In the final stages of this challenge, you may decide to create a photorealistic rendering or a rendered animation of your robot design. In this video, I will demonstrate the steps to create both, so you may successfully apply them to your solution. Our first objective is to create a static image render, like a JPEG or a TIFF. Static renderings are great for displays and report covers. We will begin with the fully assembled and constrained robot. Within the assembly environment, I would like to point out the option to change to perspective or orthographic. Now that we have adjusted the view of our assembly, let's change the environment to Inventor Studio. Selecting the Render Image button now, I can access several of the settings for the image. Regarding resolution, the higher this number, the better the resolution, but also the bigger the image and the longer it will take to render. Ideally, keep the resolution settings low. Anti-aliasing is the process used to minimize distortion in your rendering. The higher you set anti-aliasing, the better your image will look, but the trade-off is it will take a little longer to render. As we watch the rendering process, it may interest you to know that the more CPU cores a computer has, the faster the rendering goes. Each white box that you see dancing across the screen represents a CPU core. Once the rendering process is complete, Save the file as any image file type you wish to have. Finally, if you find that you want to adjust the lighting style in your image, you can do that here. For example, if you need to lighten or darken an image, use these settings. Experiment with a style that will work best for your needs. Next, we will move on to our second objective, which is to create a rendered animation. If this is your first endeavor to create a rendered animation, I recommend first viewing the video tutorial on Inventor Visualization located in the Inventor Digital Study Pack posted on the Autodesk Digital Steam Workshop. This is the animation toolbar. Most of the options for rendering and animation are located here. To begin a new rendered animation, right-click on the animations in the browser, Create New, and activate the newly created file. Once activated, the animation toolbar or timeline will appear. The animation toolbar allows you to adjust frame rates and time. Keep in mind, Inventor must render an image for every frame. For example, a 10 second video at 15 frames per second will result in the creation of 150 renderings. And now we're going to set up the camera views. This is a useful trick that allows you to toggle or return to any view setup in the animation environment. Use Create Camera View and or the Animation Toolbar View selector to assist with setting up camera views. If your animation doesn't behave as expected, you can adjust it in the animation toolbar by dragging the timelines or modifying the camera settings. Now that we have the turntable motion set, the next portion of the robot that we're going to animate is the arm. To do this, we will use the angle constraint set on the upright and the arm. We're going to use the animation constraints feature to modify the angle during the animation. We will leave the beginning angle at 50, but change the end angle to 120. We will also change the duration of the animation. Now, we will select a point on the timeline to start the motion of the arm. I've selected three seconds so the gear motion is visible while the arm is in motion. 
Earlier in the assembly stage, these gears were assembled with the motion constraints that would mimic the gears interacting with each other. Of course, you'll want to run a preview of the timeline to check the animation. In this case, the arm is raised off screen a bit out of the camera view, so we're going to adjust the camera. Use the zoom bar to adjust the camera to the correct field of view, and preview and view the animation once again. When you're satisfied with your preview, click Render Animation. Just like static image renderings, the smaller the dimensions, the faster it will go, but at a lower quality. Select the video format you wish to use, and select OK to begin the rendering process. One final note, the rendering process can take a few minutes or several hours depending on your video options and computer hardware. I want to wish you good luck as you begin to create the visualization and documentation elements for your robot model.